Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobean History. Today we are going to do something a little different. I've got some footage from the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill from when I went to Rome last year. So I was thinking instead of doing a video about the whole history of the Forum and the Palatine Hill, I thought I would just walk through it with you guys and give commentary as we watch the footage. So over here we have the Roman road that leads to the Forum from the Colosseum. Over there we can see the Arch of Titus, uh, which was built by Emperor Domitian for his older brother Titus to commemorate his victories after he died. One of the victories depicted on the Arch is the Siege of Jerusalem of 70 AC. So Titus and Domitian belong to the Flavian dynasty and uh, they're most notable for building the Colosseum. I've talked more about them in the Colosseum episode I did a few months ago. So we've passed the arch and we're entering the Forum now. Over there in the distance you can see remnants of what used to be the Emperor's Palace which encompassed the whole hill, the whole Palatine Hill. Um, that white one that you saw over there, that, that wasn't part of the Roman Palace. Uh, it was built later by a Pope. The Pope wanted a nice uh, retreat for himself and he thought, oh the Palatine Hill, oh that's a nice spot for it. Um, kind of ruining the ruins. Um, but back then the, most of the ruins were still underground and there were some stones sticking out but uh, I don't believe they knew the extent of it. So it can kind of be excused. So this is what it used to look like before the excavations. Also, all along the sides of the Forum, there were temples and other buildings. But yeah, the Christians, uh, yeah, pagan temples, they didn't like those. So they uh, converted the temples into churches rather than throwing them down. Which is why we can see some preserved facades over there. Uh, but we will get uh, more into that in a moment. So here is a better view of uh, a part of the palace on the Palatine Hill. And to the right over here we can see those temples that were converted into churches. So the entranceway and the pillars are what's left of the Roman temple. Everything behind that is a newer construction as a church. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, but that purple marble uh, that you see on the pillars, it, it's a very rare type of marble. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it's only found in one place or two places in Italy. And the quarry where it was found has since dried up. They also have uh, some really old bronze doors. So moving on to another temple. Um, again, the columns are what's left of the Roman temple, as well as some stairs, which you'll see later. Uh, but what's behind it is a newer construction of uh, a church, which the temple was converted into. Yet again, it's a common theme. Yeah, here you have a better view of the giant columns. Um, so you can uh, imagine that church at the back uh, would have been a, a temple. Up at the top you can see the inscription. And it's saying it's dedicated to the Emperor Antoninus Pius and his wife. So yeah, here you see some of the stairs that were preserved leading up to the temple, uh, the marble ones. The brick ones were constructed just to fill in the gaps, which there, there were a lot of. So yeah, only a few marble uh, steps remain from the original entranceway. And the dark stone over there is also the original foundation of the temple. And here's a quite interesting little bit. We've got this popular little wall over here with all the people around it. And the reason why it's so popular is because allegedly Caesar's ashes are buried behind that wall. So here we've come to the actual forum part of the Roman Forum. This is what it used to look like, the red dot representing where I'm standing. So over here, that square building is the Curia, so the Senate House, where the Senate would meet and make important decisions. Uh, this specific one is the Curia Julia, which was ordered to be constructed by Julius Caesar shortly before his death. The previous Curias were also built around the same location. Here we have another triumphal arch. This time it's for Septimius Severus, 
and it was raised by his sons Caracalla and Geta. That building we see on the hill over there is the Senatorial Palace. It is a medieval building, but it was built on top of the Tabularium, which was the Roman Records House. We can see at the bottom of it, we still see the ruins of that original building. Here we get another closer look at the palace on the Palatine Hill, well, part of the palace. And uh, we'll go on top of there as well, uh, near the end of the video. There we can see the remains of a basilica, which has its roots as a Roman basilica from around the year 300. And this basilica used to house the Colossus of Constantine. Here we are making our way up to the top of the Palatine Hill. Here we see a laurel tree, from which is leaves the laurel wreath is made. So now we are on top of the Palatine Hill, uh, so this whole area was part of the palace. So emperor after emperor would improve and extend the palace. And eventually the palace got so big that it encompassed the whole hill basically. But spread around were gardens, courtyards and uh, all kinds of buildings. And in many languages the word for palace derives from palatine. This might not look like much now, but this used to be a really important room. It was the emperor's throne room. So in that outcove over there, you can see where the throne would have been. Also, the walls would have been covered in marble slabs, like I covered in the Colosseum video. That's why you saw all those holes in the brick walls to hold the marble slabs in place. And this is an example of what the marble slabs might have looked like. So this uh, area over here was where the throne used to be. So at the back of the palace now, um, towards the side of the Circus Maximus. We are on top of the palace now, so uh, we can look down and they had these courtyards throughout the palace. Uh, where the light would come in from the top and they might have had a pool in the middle at the bottom or, or a fountain. Over there on the distance you can uh, even see the Vatican. So you can see there you had a courtyard, you can kind of look into it, all ruins. And over here you had another one, you can look down, uh, you can see there was a pond there, you can see the outlines, it still has water in it. Um, but yeah, again, all these brick walls, they used to be covered with marble, or most of them would be, where you see those holes in the, in the brick walls is where the slabs would have been held. So here this is a bigger open space. Uh, what you see there is actually what remains of a fountain and uh, at the back you can see the holes that the whole wall would have been marble as well. Here we move to the very edge of the palace. There was the throne room. And over here you get a good view of the Circus Maximus. So that's where they would have had the chariot racing. That's what remains of it. And the palace also had a connection to it. So the emperor could just go out of his palace and uh, walk straight to the horse racing. Here we have another building and uh, this one, the floor is kind of intact can see how it's warped over the ages. So this was part of the Flavian part of the palace. It used to be the banqueting hall and it was lavishly decorated. Here just outside the banqueting hall we had another garden in the middle of which was a pond or fountain with a labyrinth pattern and it had a little island in the middle. Now we're actually on the palace that the Pope built, which gives a good view of that uh, basilica we talked about earlier. Now we're moving up a bit, and now we're on top of the part of the palace that we saw near the beginning of the episode, which gives us a good overview of the Roman Forum. Uh, 
and this would have been part of the palace as well. That's where the Temple of Vesta would have been. And right next to it, uh, this fancy area over here is where the Vestal Virgins had their homes. Over there we can see the Colosseum and the arch where we started. So now we're on the west side. This is behind the area where you can see those uh, arches clearly from the Circus Maximus. This is the Domus Severiana, which was the final extension to the Imperial Palace. So this is the newest of uh, the ruins that we see today. And here as we descend the hill, we can see the remnants of the aqueduct that provided water to the palace. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if you want to see more videos, on screen now is my Rome playlist where you can learn about uh, things like the Colosseum and uh, Nero's Domus Aurea. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel for all kinds of history related videos.